given an integer array not find a subarray that has the largest product and return the product and now this is what that looks like so we have this the subarray that has the maximum product is one two three four the whole array that gives us 24. now in this case the maximum product is six which is going from two and three and the reason this doesn't work is because it's negative and it makes it uh, negative 12 which is less than six and these two won't work because that's negative eight which is smaller than six now in this case the maximum product is a zero and the subarray with the maximum product is negative two and zero so the product has to be of two things right and there's no two element subarray within this that is above zero so you just return zero instead and this is more complex <clears throat> but it spans the window from here to here because these two negatives can't cross each other out and become not negative become 120. okay that's that let's look at the solution so now the key to this problem is keeping track of three variables the maximum so far the minimum so far and the result and what does that look like from the beginning so we initialize all of them to the first thing in the array and then we step over to the next array and we calculate the minimum by the maximum so far by multiplying it uh, I, I finding the maximum of the current thing which is negative five right negative five multiplying this by two and multiplying uh the, the same thing by the minimum so far right the minimum so far happened uh, happen to be two in this case so multiplying by two find the max and for the minimum we're doing the minimum of that operation and i think it's clear in, in code so we're looping through the entire array right i mean first of all we check oh, if it's zero then just make it return zero then we initialize everything we see here right uh we set the result to the max so far because we want the max at the, the maximum product and then we're looping through the rest of the elements of the end array right and over the course of this loop what are we doing we're getting the current we create a temporary maximum because we're going to use the previous maximum, right? And store it down here. But notice that we're between max and min, the only difference is that we're just taking the math.max and math.min, but it's of the same thing. So current, max so far times current, min so far times current. And then we set, we update max so far down here. Uh, and then our result is the max so far and the result, whatever uh, that turns out to be. And we return the result and we're done. That's all there is to this problem. And this uh, steps through it, although to be honest, I think I prefer Leeds Code's view of this. So I like how they colored, uh, they color coded their numbers. So we start off with here, here, the max, the base order starts off as two, result of two which we saw in the code so far, max so far starts out as the first value, which is two. And then as we loop through the array, the rest of the array, still continuing from one, we get current, max so far, min so far, right? And max so far, min so far, everything starts out as the first thing. Then current becomes negative five, the minimum of negative five, two times negative five, two times negative five, and then a maximum of the same thing, right? It gives us, helps us update uh, these values. And that basically, that's what you're seeing here. That's exactly what's happening here. And now we, and the reason we use this temp is because we can't do these in parallel, right? So if you overwrite max so far here, it's gonna affect min so far, right? Cause it's gonna use a new max so far. So you wanna use the old one basically. So that's why we use a temporary value here. And then we update it down here later after the fact. But that's all you do like throughout the whole array, right? And it gives you what we're looking for, the maximum uh, subarray product, right? Maximum product of the subarray at the end of the day. So let's look at the time complexity discussion. And um, and again, you, you're using previous solutions, right? Um, that's why it's considered a dynamic programming problem. And it's O of N because you loop only once, and O of 1 because no other space in input is required for the algorithm. That's all there is to this. Later.